uh, I want to be conscious of time. I know we have a little workshop right after this. So um, I'm going to assume it's going to come up in a second. I think if I were going to name this talk anything I could, I think I would say the question in my mind is can a game help America out of the recession? And my own background is as a social entrepreneur. Uh, this is my fourth startup, all venture backed companies that are focused on using business and technology to actually create social good and to try to benefit society, but doing it through the model of viable business. Uh, my last company is called World of Good. It's in the sustainable commerce space, totally different, fair trade, green products from all around the world, uh, helping small scale producers and educating US consumers. That company is now part of eBay. And I think one of the big shifts that happened in my development as an entrepreneur between building World of Good to building Save Up, which uses gamification or motivational design in the creation of the application, is that I think in the world of sustainability and sustainable commerce and activities like social entrepreneurship, for a long time we were very focused on designing in ways that convinced people that taking a vitamin because it's a vitamin or doing the right thing because it's the right thing is something you should do. And trying to appeal to people's higher nature and to their ideals of what is right. I think the interesting thing about Save Up is we've actually flipped the whole script on its head. And when I say, can a game help America out of the recession, what we're really doing is seeing, can we encourage Americans to save money, to pay down debt, to change their financial behaviors, but instead of trying to convince them, hey, this is the good thing to do, let me appeal to your higher nature, in some ways what we're doing is just using a lot of fun and games and incremental rewards and extrinsic rewards, and in sometimes I feel like we're kind of driving a little more to their true nature and tricking it out to help them achieve their intrinsic reward or goal, which is, for most people, they would like more financial security and more financial success. And so for me, in building this application and designing this experience for users, along with my co-founder, Sammy, it's been a really powerful experience in revising the way that we create social change. Maybe social change is going to be a gummy vitamin instead of a straight vitamin. And I think Save Up is the design of a financial product that is a gummy vitamin. And I'm really excited about the results we're seeing. I, I'm, uh, okay, that's okay. Just use it not full screen. It's okay. Um, so uh, one of the things that we've seen in the design of this application is the most important habit we wanted to change is that the average person in the United States looks at their finances only twice a year, okay? And I'm not talking about balance checking to see if you overdrew your account, which ever since the invention of the mobile app, that's very habit forming and people are doing that all the time. As we know, habits uh, can be very powerful. Oh, sorry. Uh, let me back up. Okay. So um, when what we wanted to see was can we change how frequently a person thinks about their personal finances and thinks about it in a holistic sense, meaning their balance sheet, how much they've saved, how much debt they've paid down, and kind of their compass of where they're going. And if you can bring a person's attention to their personal finances much more frequently, can you then start to motivate behavior incrementally? to save a dollar, pay down a dollar of debt, and then make better financial choices. So that was really the original focus of the design. Of course, the question any business person in the room is asking is, well, how do you support that? Is that a business? So just to clarify my personal opinion and what history has proven to us, if you actually have people's attention on their personal finances on a highly frequent basis, there's actually many ways to ethically monetize that. And so I will talk about monetization, but I'll ask you to pause that until we come back to that point. But when we went into the design, what we've created is Save Up, which is the first rewards program or rewards game for your good financial actions. And 
What we did is we decided to use big prizes as well as small rewards, all of which are very extrinsic. And so the initial impression, and I think in a lot of game design, is the fear that using a lot of extrinsic rewards can actually begin to backfire. And we've heard a lot of that in the research. There's actually a lot of subtler elements of game design involved in Save Up, but we are definitely playing the dangerous game of touching on highly extrinsic rewards and angling those to motivate and drive behavior. I'm going to show you the data because the data is exciting. We actually went to some pretty powerful research which was run in an offline world called Private Savings, which if those of you are familiar at all, if you're European, in England they have something called a lottery bond. And it's actually a kind of savings instrument where you put your money in and you get, instead of just getting back your own interest, you actually get the chance to win everyone's interest. And so it's kind of like a big, huge lottery on top of a savings bond. And you still have your base bond. Now, this thing's been around for 80 years, but the research was done recently by Professor Tufano at Harvard. And what he showed was that people are so motivated by the small chance at something very big that they essentially do change daily behavior for that. Now, in the United States, we have people walking to 7-Eleven who don't have enough money sometimes to pay rent, but still paying $3 for a lottery ticket, OK? We have people going to Las Vegas, and it's basically the same me mechanic, which is the possibility of a large skewed reward. And we actually use this research as an anchor for the design in Save Up because we felt like this was already proven and it was already working. The key to Save Up, though, that we wanted was we didn't want people to have to go open any kind of a new special bank account. We wanted any American using the accounts they already had to be able to save a dollar or pay down a dollar of debt and get a chance to get rewarded and get engaged in a positive game behavior around their finances. So we actually employed aggregation technology. So those of you who are familiar with um, Mint or a, an application like that, uh, or your bank's personal fan financial management or PFM tool, uh, my co-founder uh, is the CTO. We basically built a back-end integration so any American can come to save up and link any financial account, their 401k from their job, an IRA, their car loan, their student loan, their home loan. The average saves up user is coming to save up and linking six to seven accounts. So they are not only coming to this for a rewards game, they're actually organizing their finances, which was the whole point that we wanted to achieve, is can we get you to look at your balance sheet and get organized? And from the day that we started, we were able to make it available to link with any one of 19,000 financial institutions without signing a single enterprise deal. So every single American brings their own data and can use Save Up. We can also partner with any financial institution to be able to offer it in a more customized way to their members because we use this aggregation technology. We're into its first external partner on the use of this. So I think one of the important takeaways here is when you're thinking about these kinds of applications where you could create a layer using gamification or using these motivation methods, how do you do it in such a way that you unfetter your application as much as possible. And you move to some of the new trends, which is that users now own their own data. We're going to see this in healthcare. We're seeing it in personal finance. We're seeing it in health and fitness. We're seeing it in the portability of your social content. And there's huge opportunities to build from that. What we have at Save Up is very simple. You link your account. Every dollar you deposit, you get one credit. For every dollar you pay on your debts, you get one credit. And you can use those to play for big prizes. The largest prize we actually have is a $2 million jackpot. We have cars, vacations, gift cards, all the way down to tiny rewards like coupons and discounts and things like that. But we also have leaderboards. We also use other mechanics, which I'll go over quickly. But the concept here is meant to be simple. It's meant to be easy. Our main goal was to see if we can create a habit. And we're really excited about the metrics that we're seeing. These are some of our users. I, I won't belabor the point. 
But what we've basically seen is that it is working. Taking extrinsic reward motivation, which everybody has some desire for, and we've heard a lot about status, I think, here. I think another interesting thing is how do you use extrinsic rewards in a way that is sustainable, that has a kind of habitualness to it, and still has some fun in it. Sometimes it has some frustration in it, because obviously not every one of our users is going to win $2 million. So how do you navigate that, and how do you create an experience where that variability of reward and possibility is actually part of the excitement of the experience, and not one of the annoyances? But the great thing is, what we're seeing in the user path is the users are often linking up because they want to get rewarded for saving money and paying debt. And what they're actually doing is then they aggregate all their accounts. As they get organized, they start to see their progress on saving money, paying down debt. They see their assets changing. And we also have a lot of integrated financial education, like two-minute videos. We do challenges. We do behavioral motivation. We have certified financial planners that do webinars on the site, and you can get one-on-one -on -one counsel from them. So there's a lot of other intrinsic things that begin to unlock very quickly. And what we see is this is not a product for every user, but among the users who come to save up, particularly in the age group between 22 and 35, which is the population that we've heard a lot about, sort of Gen Y, early Gen X, what we're seeing is an incredible level of engagement in terms of people not only playing for the games and prizes, but more importantly, actually engaging with their finances, with the financial education, with the content, and making real progress. Also, the retention looks excellent and very strong for what we've seen in any kind of a financial product. So when we look at these metrics, what we're comparing to is products like a PFM, so a personal financial management system, an example being like Mint. Most of these numbers are double or triple the average PFM. And so what we've basically found is by integrating kinds of fun and engaging pieces, but still keeping the utility of a financial organization tool, that marriage creates something really powerful. And I think that is what you want to try to design and unlock in your design. And we're still evolving. So we're not saying this is like, hey, we've arrived and this is perfect. We're saying in V1 of our product, which has been out a year, and we have now a large sample set and, and a significant number of users, we're seeing this really working. And as we see it working for users coming directly to the application, we've now started also partnering with financial service providers so that we can create customized versions. It's not white labeled, it's still branded Save Up Rewards, but we have credit unions across the country as well as mid-size and large financial institutions that are basically for the first time offering a rewards system to their customers that is for the first time not about rewarding you for spending. It's actually saying, hey, we'll reward you when you save a dollar, pay down a dollar of debt. And the really interesting thing that we're seeing, we did a study with 14 financial institutions done by an independent institute called the Filings Research Institute, is it drove up net promoter score and loyalty and relationship for the financial institution. because. If your financial institution was actually helping you, you would feel a lot more interested in building a relationship and loyalty with them. So I think this is another thing, is in your loyalty design, think about loyalty not only from the perspective of the company that you're working for. Think of it from the perspective of the customer and the person you're working for. The banks, when they first meet with us, they do honestly sometimes say, why would I offer this to my customers when you're incenting them to pay down their debt, which is how I make my money? And I'm like, you know, you have it all wrong. You want them to pay on time and be current. You want them to have a good relationship with your bank because that's how they're going to originate a bigger product or a better service or a different loan. Think in a longer term relationship. And I think we have to design applications that think like that and that are in the best interest of our customers. I'll just show you quickly. This is the actual product experience. And I just wanted to give you a view into how it works. It's meant to not look like a traditional PFM on purpose. The vitamin of save up is right up in this corner. Just the total money you've saved and the total debt you've paid off. 
When the user starts, it starts at zero. As they link their accounts and as they make deposits, it starts building up to add a dollar each time and they can start tracking. They earn credits up here. I'm sorry, I'm terrible with this pointer. But they earn credits at the top and they use those to play for the prizes. And this is just an example of the prizes. If you click on more prizes, there's a huge uh, listing of all kinds of large prizes. And then they can also trade for small rewards like coupons, gift cards, discounts. The way we're funding that, just to be clear, is we're using models of what are used in all kinds of social and online games, and we use a sweepstakes model. We don't advertise Save Up as a sweepstakes, but what we've actually done is the way that you get your credits is totally free. When you save a dollar or pay down a dollar of debt, it costs you zero. In the United States, that qualifies as a socially responsible behavior that is actually free to you. So as you earn those credits and enter for these prizes, they're sweepstakes. We bond them and insure them, and then we have advertisers and sponsors whose CPM costs are basically offsetting the costs of the bonding and the insurance. So that's how we're able to do a wide range of prizes. And the more we scale, the better they will continue to get. And that's how we're able to do the coupons and deals is by working with affiliate programs and with different kinds of advertisers around those as well. The other thing here is these are some real quotes. And what's cool about the quotes for me personally is they always say, you know, I started using this to help, you know, because I wanted to win or I heard about this, my friend told me about this, and the reason I love it is because it's helping me get organized or it's helping me save money or I'm paying off my student loan, I'm getting motivated, I'm accomplishing my goals. So we're psyched about that. These are just some of the examples of the prize tickets, the way the playing works, the game. I, I'm not going to go through all this. And then the last thing, I, I'm sh am I running out of time? Sorry, just time check. My, a minute, okay. So basically what I wanted to make sure and say is that Save Up is not just based on the extrinsic rewards and I do think in your design, it is very important that we think much more deeply about what is the other kinds of mechanics to make an experience sticky. To have 30% of people coming back every day, 50% coming back multiple times a week, it isn't just the chance to win $2 million that does that. It's lots of other fun little mechanics that we're building into the experience. Not going to have time to go through all of these. I think most of you that are studying this field have heard of all of these. Um, and I think the most exciting part for me personally is what's been accomplished by the Save Up community in less than a year. So almost a half a billion dollars in assets that have moved either into savings or debt being paid off. That's huge, and it's only the beginning of what we can do as we now start to ramp and help this community grow and take control of its finances. 75,000 financial education sessions, that's huge. And 24,000 challenges, which is where a person gets challenged to save a little more or pay down a little more debt. And 50% actually report saving more or paying down more debt to an independent entity, not to us. So we're really excited about where we're going with this product. We'd love feedback or input, and we'd love for you to check it out and send us an email. You can find me at priya at saveup.com, and you can check us out on Facebook or Twitter as well. So we're really excited to be here. It's an honor. Thank you, and we welcome your input and thoughts. And I believe that a game can help Americans out of the recession, and I hope you'll help us figure out how to make that possible.